Hi everybody, it's me, Dr. Kessler from Lorain County Community College. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that my temperature today is 98.2. Um, and I checked my temperature before I came into the, uh, into to work today. By the way, this might look a little bit different tomorrow. Um, there's still, everybody who's working behind the camera right now is still gonna be working behind uh, the, uh, the, the camera. Uh, Adam and Ron and except they're going to be working at home and I'm going to be working at home So I'm going to send them videos because it's time for me to start staying home and uh, um, I've Called off a lot of my staff here. They're they're staying at home today. And uh, in fact our entire uh, department is uh, Is 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 not coming in tomorrow um, Okay um, let me just start with this. Um, we've been hearing a lot about drugs, and, and actually in this morning's uh, press conference, the president addressed that and the FDA director direct, uh, talked about drugs. Here is an example of, uh, of, a, of a paper, and I want to just be very cautious, in, and I am an optimist. I, am, I think you all know me as an eternal optimist, and that's the way I, I live my life. However, when it comes to developing drugs, I'm a little bit of a pessimist. Um, I have students all the time and they come up to me and they say, hey, Dr. Kessler, Dr. Kessler, there's a new drug that uh, kills HIV in the laboratory. It's gonna cure AIDS and we're all done and that'll be great. And I have to act fake enthusiastic um, because I'm not really enthusiastic. I, I don't wanna crush their spirit. Uh, I want them to be inquisitive and look at things and understand stories, but the fact of the matter is, is most things that are developed in the laboratory fail. You'll notice the last word on this paper here from in Nature uh, Cell Discovery is in vitro, which by the way, those of you who are my students will know it should be either underlined or italicized. Um, there's a typo there, but uh, that's another day's problem. Um, in vitro means in the test tube, and things that work in the test tube, almost uh, not many of them work in people. Not many of them go on beyond that. Um, after all, Clorox kills uh, both COVID and uh, HIV, but nobody is taking a Clorox gargle uh, or injecting uh, Clorox to cure HIV um, because of the toxicity. The drugs that are being tested in this paper that you're uh, looking at right now um, are anti-malarial drugs. Um, and anti-malaria, uh, malarial drugs, plasmodium, folliculiparum, plasmodium vivax, the causative agents of malaria are much, much different than COVID. One is a uh, protist, and, uh, which is a more, more like a, a cell that is alive. And a, of course, a virus is an obligate intercellular parasite, which means it needs a host. So a very different, also anti-malarial drugs tend to have toxic effects. Um, and you'll notice in the title, it's less toxic effects. So while I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you with the hope that this is something that is useful and worthwhile, I don't have a lot of confidence that it is going to be the magic bullet that we're all looking for right now. I put a little bit more stock in the vaccine work that's going on. Another thing that, that happened, uh, um, today is that uh, a company has announced that they are going to be uh, releasing a test kit for testing for, for, for COVID-19 at home. Um, so you can register your kit, you can collect your sample, you can mail it to, uh, uh, send it off to uh, FedEx, and uh, you will receive results um, online. Um, and this is going to be rolled out on March 23rd. Of course, the more testing that we do, the better the data. Um, I think I mentioned it yesterday um, that the data that we have, um, we are currently going through a massive uptick in the number of cases, but not really. Um, we're going, we we're seeing more cases because we're testing more. We weren't testing much last week, so now we're gonna see more and more and more cases. Um, and then we'll, we'll see how that levels off. One last thing I wanna talk about um, is this week's morbidity or mortality weekly report. And uh, um, you know, one of the things that I, uh, um, I film these things daily because things kind of change daily and I wanna give you the best information. And by the way, I'll put this out there, some of my earlier podcasts may, may be wrong. 
Um, and that's the way science kind of works. We go on the best, best information we possibly can, and then uh, um, hopefully we, we get it right, um, but we'll adjust it if it's wrong, if uh, we'll correct it if it's wrong. Um, the thing that I'm most concerned about is this. Um, and uh, I'm, uh, this is a new, this is, came out of the CDC uh, yesterday, and it's talking about um, hospitalizations. And I'm seeing that there is a unequal, uh, there is a distribution, sorry, of, of hospitalizations that are quite high um, for everybody, um, not just the, the elderly as we've seen. Obviously, we still have quite a bit of deaths that are in the older population. Um, and, uh, um, but we're seeing more hospitalizations in everybody around. So this is not just the standard, typical cold that you might get. Um, this is a new virus. This is a new thing. And, and uh, uh, one of the things that keeps us healthy from colds in general is because we've had them before and we have some immunity. So we're seeing people who are, are, are having, uh, even younger people who are having issues with this and hospitalizations are, are occurring. Um, so again, that flattening of the curve really is important. It is very important. One of the reasons that I'm gonna start broadcasting these from my home now is to not come into uh, a, a workplace. Um, one of the things, I, I forgot to mention this yesterday, and that is um, that um, um, when we, uh, the college is actually disinfecting the entire campus while you're all away from the college. Um, and uh, we're gonna be disinfecting room by room and sealing them up, and that should be good. Um, one of the things I mentioned yesterday is this virus can live on a surface for, um, for hours, um, like 40 hours, which is practically two full days um, uh, of, 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 of lifespan. And even on something like, uh, um, like cardboard, this is a question that came from one of the viewers, and, um, and the question is, is how psychotic do we have to be in your own home about cleaning? Um, does the virus live on Amazon boxes and deliveries? We're trying to just get, go out once a week for groceries, but we have orders being delivered. Everybody has orders being delivered. Um, my wife signed us up for a food delivery service um, today, and I wanna kind of address that, um, and I'll show you I have here the very thing, an Amazon box. Um, and what I will do with this Amazon box is I will bring it into the home. Um, and I've got my hands up like I've just got pulled over. Um, and I'm going to keep them up. And that reminds me not to do anything else with them. Uh, this is, reminds me that I'm in a sterile field right now. And I want to, want to do it. So I set my box down on the counter. Um, I empty the box. I take out the contents. I may want to wipe down the contents with one of my wipes. Um, and so I take the things out and wipe them off with a wipe. And then um, I end up, um, at the end of the day, I'm going to take this box outside, um, put it in recycling, put it away. I am going to disinfect this surface here. Throw that, uh, throw that uh, wipe away. And I've got my hands up like I've been pulled over, and uh, um, I'm going to uh, um, not do anything until I, with those hands, until I get to a sink and wash them up. Um, and by the way, if I accidentally do this on the surface, um, the protocol is to get another wipe out or whatever you're using to clean and wipe that surface down again. And again, hands up until you get them washed. Um, and uh, not touch face. Um, that's kind of what I, what I want you all to do. Um, all right, last thing we do in this is I want to tell you about the, uh, um, the, the good news stories here. And I have a couple of good news stories here um, and I, uh, um, some helpers. Uh, we found some helpers. Um, first of all, uh, let me tell you, Panini's in Westlake is giving a 20% discount on carryout if you are medical personnel or a first responder. Um, also, there's a place called the Foundry Cl Concert Club, and they are giving away food, giving away food to anybody who is a, uh, let's say, a wait staff or a cook or who has been laid off. 
um, they'll feed you. Um, and that's in Lakewood. Um, and uh, they will feed you and take care of you. Um, speaking of concert clubs, I know a lot of musicians are now performing from their basement. Um, and uh, um, one thing that we all can do um, is, you know, give them, they have Venmo accounts, um, and they can, you can give them a little something something for uh, the concerts that they're doing, and that's a great way. Um, and then this sign up there in the top of this uh, uh, is a, a, uh, a someone, someone put this sign up in uh, Rocky River, and it's a, a beautiful sign. We're all in this together, um, and we are. We're all in this uh, together. So uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, remember to be good to each other and to persist like a lentivirus. Thanks a lot.